Ivanka, hey man, how are you? I'm doing well. How are you doing? <laughs> you're doing you're doing great. I mean, when that we we all walked in here tonight and we saw your name on the board for starting, and were you just thinking, uh, you let's just go crazy? Yeah, no, I, I I was just I mean I thought about it like any other moment, uh, any any other moment. Um, obviously, I was a little bit more excited about tonight just because I was able to be out there with my teammates on the court. Um, just because of my situation and our team situation this year, I don't necessarily get to do that too much. Um, but I enjoy every second with my team and I enjoy embodying my role. And, um, and it, it felt really good to, to just be out there with my teammates playing, playing basketball. We haven't got to talk to you uh, just yet because of the setup here. But Shaka mentioned that you had thought about redshirting this year, yeah. at least initially. Yeah, that, what, what what was that, and then going away from that, and now you're playing? Um, yeah, so my initial thoughts back in I want to say in quarantine back in April when I was up in Alaska, I spent some time with my family, uh, spent some time home, and and ultimately I came to the decision that I was going to redshirt this upcoming year, um, just because of the how our team was, just the guys that we had. Um, I thought that I would be better off uh, myself and, and then helping my teammates as well. Uh, not playing this year, focusing on on other things and how I can control the game in other ways, uh, contribute to the game in other ways. So that was my initial uh, my initial thought that, that I was going to redshirt. And then, of course, the NCAA came out saying that this was a free year for everybody. Uh, so Coach Mar just pretty much told me to stay on ice. That's what we that's what we call it, uh, and just continue to embody the role that I do have, and then stay ready for whenever he calls my number. Dustin, go ahead. So, Maka, I mean, you've been like a one-man energy band on the sidelines, you know, for, for most of the season. Like, you know, where does that come from? Because, it, you know, it, it does take an unselfish person to say, hey, I'm going to be all about the team and help them any way I can. You know, most of the time it's in that role. And tonight, you, you, you know, come off the bench and start and, and have 18 points. Uh, yeah, I think it just comes from the genuine love that I have for my coaches and my teammates. Uh, I really ultimately want to see our team succeed. And, and when our team succeeds, that means I succeed as well. So there's no reason to pout about uh, not playing, playing, making shots, not making shots, whatever it, whatever the case may be. I think it's just that underlying love that I have for my coaches and that I have for my teammates and just the want for them to, to succeed ultimately. You've, you've been around here a few years now. Is, is this the most unselfish team that you've been apart from? And just watching you guys move the basketball tonight, a lot of extra passes. doesn't seem like people care who scores. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I think that a lot of the work that we do off the court is kind of translating into our camaraderie on the court for sure. Um, of course, experience helps with that. Um, communication with the coach helps with that. Uh, I think just how the chips have fallen for us this year, uh, it's ultimately aligns how, how we've been building it up to um, the past two years that I've been here. And then, uh, and then of course, previous years that Coach Smart has been here. Coach, I'm sure Coach Smart has had this in his vision since he's gotten to Texas. And I'm really just happy for him to to see all uh, all of those things that he's been he's been wanting to achieve. Um, he's starting to achieve it a little bit, and of course, we have a lot more work to go for sure. And I think that we're a team that's going to continue to work, continue to get better, and ultimately prepare for what we uh, what we really want to do, what our common goal is. Nick, go ahead. Yeah, come on. You know, you clearly have leaned into your role as a hype man, but obviously, you haven't been slack, and you put in work. I mean, what kind of work did you put in this off season to improve your body, improve your game? Uh, I've put in a lot of work. I think, I think that a lot, a majority of the work that I have put in has been with, uh, our, our strength and conditioning coach, uh, coach Hootie. I just call her Hootie. Uh, I really love that woman as well. And I think the relationship that we've, uh, built these past couple of months has really helped me help my game, um, help me get into better shape, help me get, get stronger. Um, just so I'm able to compete better out there. And then of course, um, I spent a lot of time with coach Barry as well. Uh, he's helped me a lot with my basketball game. Um, and yeah, I mean, I, I do spend a lot of time on my game and, and although like, like, I mean, you guys know, obviously I don't play, uh, that doesn't necessarily, that doesn't have to affect my work ethic at all. Um, so I'm just going to continue to chip away, continue to, to improve where I can, um, and help my teammates improve where, where they can. And then hopefully we can put it together at the end of the season. Yeah. And, and y'all obviously are, are a little used to playing shorthanded because you only had, you know, eight, sometimes seven guys last year down the stretch during that run. How much did that help you going into tonight's game, just because you sort of have been here before? Yeah, it, it definitely helps. And I think that that speaks to the experience that this team has. Um, I don't know. I don't think we graduated anybody last year. Uh, I don't think we lost any guys. We just added Gregory, I believe. Um, but yeah, it, it definitely helps. 
And I think that all of the work that we put in from last year up into this year has definitely helped as well. And, and I think that if, if we can continue to have the same mindset uh, that, we have, that, we, uh, that we have in our approach to every game, uh, to every practice, to every workout, whatever the case may be, um, I think it's going to continue to help. And we're going we're gonna to continue to stack good habits on top of good habits until ultimately we become the team that we want to be. Brian, you're up. Michael, how, how would big picture wise, how would you describe just the last few days, everybody wanting to bounce back from, from tech? Oh yeah, absolutely. Our theme for this upcoming game was uh, make them pay. Um, and obviously we want to, we want to make every opponent pay for just being in front of us. Um, but yeah, I think that, I think that again, it, it just speaks to uh, our experience one, um, the level of connection that we have as a group of guys uh, not just up my teammates, but my coaches as well. I think that it's a very genuine connection. Um, and then we're able to kind of uh, translate that um, into our approach to practice first. Um, and then, of course, to the game, uh, going up to the game. I think that our preparation uh, these past couple of days after the loss uh, was really good, really high intensity, a lot of communication. And I think that it helped spark what we were able to achieve tonight and then continue to achieve as, as we continue to take that same approach to practice and, and everything else that we do. Cool. And then the other question I had is, why did you cut your hair and why did you go with the headband? <laughs> uh, so this, this is actually a look from, I want to say, back in 2017, um, which was a long time ago. Y'all might be able to find some pictures, but I was just, I had just thought that nobody at the University of Texas knew what I looked like without long hair. And I just kind of wanted to change it up a little bit, I guess. And then, of course, it makes me a little bit more aerodynamic. So I'm able to run out there a little bit faster, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Get to my spot a little bit faster. <laughs> Top that, Dustin. Well, I was going to say, as long as you're not taking hair tips from Dylan Osakowski, I think you're going to be okay. <laughs> but, um, I, I was, you, you mentioned Coach Hootie earlier. I, that's what I was going to ask you is, you know, we haven't seen you play that much, but from what we, the little we've seen, you look more flexible, more agile, more athletic. I mean, are those specific areas that you guys really targeted this offseason that kind of un unlock some of those things for you? Yeah, absolutely. And like me and Hootie have uh, you can ask her, too. I don't know if y'all do interviews with strength and conditioning coaches, but we spent a lot of time together and. It's been, first, it's been a, just a genuine relationship. And then she kind of pl places little gems in my ears of what I need to get better at, what I need to get better at. And my whole thing is tightening up because I'm so long and loose that she wants me to be short and compact and, and move quick, move quick. And in order for me to do that, I have to continue to load up weight on my back. Whatever, whatever Hootie wants me to do, I'm going to do it. And I'm not going to question it. And I think that ultimately that's why I've been able to, to move a little bit better, whatever, like whatever you guys see out there and, and et cetera.